a biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. As you know, Tasmania is off to the polls this weekend and 2020 will be coming to you live from Hobart on Friday with an election preview. We'll be broadcasting from St. David's Cathedral, one of the most historic churches in Tasmania. And we'll welcome a panel of election commentators bringing insights into the unfolding election. Well, some insights today from Mark Brown, who is a former Australian Christian Lobby State Director for Tasmania. But this week, he is standing as an independent in the seat of Bass. Bass is on the northeast coastal region of Tasmania. Mark Brown, a special welcome along to 2020. Thank you, Neil. It's great to be here. Mark, a snap election in Tasmania. Do you think the snap election took most Tasmanians by surprise? I don't think so, Neil. I think people saw it coming um, a fair way off, simply because they could see that the the two Liberals who went into the independent um, space were putting pressure on the government and it was looking at uh, over a number of months as though that relationship wasn't going to last. So I don't think it was completely unexpected, but I think a lot of people are very glad, to be honest, that it's a short uh, run up to the election because, as we know, it's very easy to get um, yeah uh, overawed with it all very quickly. And so I think people are very happy that it's short. And, of course, a short election campaign, as you say, the big winners are the people because they don't have to endure a long, long, drawn-out and tedious campaign. You, though, you're standing as an independent. Um, I guess there's some sort of, you know, you could have been taken by surprise. No doubt uh, the Rockcliffe government uh, wants to make the most of having just a short campaign. Yes, well... It was certainly a surprise in the sense that God's call for me to actually stand was a very short thing. I was sitting with my pastor and we were talking about the needs of the state and and needing to bring some balance um, into policies. And one thing led to another and I ended up putting up my hand, which I, I've certainly considered in the past. But um, it's it's very different being on the other end of uh, a forum where I've obviously in the past run um, a candidate's forum to get our views um, across from the candidates, but I was on the other side of that uh, over the last week or two, and so it's been it's been good. Okay, what are the biggest issues uh, that you're campaigning on, or that the people that you've been door knocking and uh, doing your campaigning? What are the biggest issues that are attracting attention? Well, the t- the top three, which are probably similar across the country, um, are health, housing, and cost of living pressures. And we've got a very aging population here in Tasmania and a lot of very bad indicators in terms of some of the, the more, um, yeah, the more common diseases like cancers, et cetera. So there is a, there's a huge, um, I suppose, unrest in terms of uh, waiting times for elective surgery, waiting times to see uh, specialists and even in the emergency departments. I think the average wait time is about nine hours. And so this has been going on for many years. And the people I talk to, that, those are the, the three uh, key areas. Housing is a huge issue because we've got over 4,000 on uh, state housing waiting lists. We've got um, vacancy rates very low, particularly in Hobart, I think it, like 0.7%, and I think it's just over one in Launceston. So it's very hard to get into the rental market, very hard to get state housing if you're on that list. And so what we're seeing is um, an overflow of people needing to live on the streets pretty much. So across from where I live in uh, Launceston, there is, there's a, a basically a tent city that's formed because people have got nowhere else to go. And, and going and talking to them and hearing their stories, it's, uh, it's very sobering because a lot of them are just average Joe blogs, some of them families, and they can't compete in this, uh, in this market for, for housing particularly. And when you've got a tent city, in some sense, that's the definition of a crisis point. Is it just Launceston or are there other towns, cities, communities throughout Tasmania that are dealing with the same sort of issue that you're aware? Yeah, it is right around Tasmania, Neil. And um, so this is my main focus on my campaign is to say the priorities need to be obviously those things, housing and health and lowering cost of living pressures. But 
um, in saying that, I'm saying we should be putting this stadium, which is estimated it's probably going to be over a billion dollars spend in Hobart's Macquarie Point. I'm saying no to the stadium. That's my main message. And let's prioritise these things which are in our face. And so I'm saying it's the wrong time and it's the wrong place because Macquarie Point's got a lot of significance to the cultural inter- indigenous community, the uh, the convict community, because that's where the first um, connection with um, Lieutenant Governor Collins happened at that point. And also right next door, the RSL, um, you know, they've got their, um, their cenotaph there and it's right next door. It's a very sensitive area in Macquarie Point, which is, um, on the waterfront in Hobart. So I'm saying wrong wrong time, wrong place, and um, it's a wrong priority. Is this a divisive issue around the stadium? Um, because, you know, we're only a day or two away from uh, the official launch of a Tasmania AFL team. Uh, there can be some national pride or some state pride in a, in a team like that, uh, colours and logos and memberships and, and such things. But the, the actual stadium itself, is this a contentious point? Is Tasmania divided over the stadium? It is very divided, and it's it's sad, but there's always been a north-south divide, um, and this is just, uh, in my view, it seems to be uh, accentuating that. Now, the north has always been um, the, the centre of AFL in Tasmania. We get a lot bigger crowds uh, in the north at Utah Stadium, uh, which in my mind, is a much better prospect because it's going to be upgraded anyway. It's going to end up with 27,000 seats, whereas the new one is only going to have 23,000, much more central to all Tasmanians, closer to the mainland, much much more room to expand. So it seems like the AFL has basically um, said this is the way or the highway. There's no other way of doing it. But I think maybe it, with an election and with some um, fresh blood in Parliament, it might be a, a chance to turn that around and say, hey, let's look at this from a, a different viewpoint, renegotiate, because I don't think the terms uh, that we have got with the AFL are, are very good for Tasmania. Mark, let me ask you about some of the contentious issues around Christians and voting in Tasmania, because uh, there's all sorts of moves uh, around parental rights around uh, the thought that, you know, um, Christians can be criminalised, parents can be criminalised, around issues of sexuality and gender and such things. Uh, have you been compa- campaigning on some of those issues? Have you been getting any feedback from Tasmanian residents? Well, the average um, person in the street, it's not uh, a contentious issue. I'm, many of them are not even aware of it. Um, but like I said, the most of the issues that I've been focusing on are health and cost of living and housing. But certainly the conversion bill, which we have got before our parliament, and we're seeing other states like Victoria have already gone ahead that way. Uh, in my view, they are dangerous bills. They they squash the freedoms, freedom of speech, freedom of um, yeah conscience and religion, and they also reduce the the level of uh, choice that people have when they're seeking help and seeking to negotiate some of the the difficult questions they have, particularly in young people as they're growing up. So I think it's a a negative thing. And I've said in the different forums that I've been involved in, I've said I I want to see that squashed. I think we're heading in a dangerous direction because, uh, yeah, I don't think it's good for um, individuals. I don't think it's good for society. Uh, Now, you're standing as an independent. Uh, Let me just ask you for your uh, honest, objective viewpoint, perhaps, Uh, maybe not taking favourites both sides. You've got Premier Jeremy Rockliffe, you've got Opposition Leader Rebecca White. Uh, Are they popular amongst the people you're talking about? Uh, Are there some strengths or weaknesses you can identify? From from what I'm hearing, and again, this is objective, I'm not putting my... my, uh, at two cents in here, but I think there is a bit of uh, people have their noses out of joint with the major parties. And so I think the independents, the minor parties are going to do very well in this election. I don't think the Liberals will be able to form a majority government, so they will need to find somebody else uh, to serve with, and that will either be minor parties or independents. Now, obviously, I'd hope one of those would be me. In the natural, uh, my chances are, are very slim. First time I've actually ever put my hand up my profile is not huge. It might be fairly good in the in the Christian community, but in the general community, not so. But again, I, I'm i following what I believe is the Lord's call. I would certainly not put my hand up if I didn't feel the Lord giving me direction to do so. So 
Um, my campaign has been very different because I've had one message, no stadium, and nobody else has had a, a message on their signs or um, their public publicity like I have. So I, I suppose I stand out in that way and, and taking that single issue simply because there was no time to really um, focus on multiple issues when you've only got a month to, to campaign in. Uh, there's been a bit of research that's been going on from Christian organisations who are interested in identifying where candidates and where parties stand. Um, what have you been recommending to Christians to inform themselves about how they might cast a vote on, on Saturday? Yes, yeah, so Neil, there are, as always, uh, very good websites to go and get information on parties, but also on individual candidates as well. So the, the, I suppose the easiest thing I would suggest is to go to christianvalues.org.au, christianvalues.org.au. They've got a PDF that you can print off, and that gives you a bit of an overview of where the parties sit on uh, different uh, issues that are important to Christians. But then at the bottom of that form, there's also some links to a couple of other websites. One is Vote Wisely, which Sharon Cousins has put together. And also the ACL TAS Votes website. And they go more into detail into individual candidates and where they sit uh, on specific issues that they've asked in a survey. So if you stick with christianvalues.org.au, you'll get the whole three of them in that um, PDF that they've got on that website. So that's what I'd suggest. So for Christians in Tasmania looking for a little bit of guidance around parties and candidates, christianvalues.org.au and also the ACL site, tasvotes.org.au and then there's the Vote Wisely site. Uh, just good getting your insights here. Uh, Mark Brown, uh, former Australian Christian Lobby State Director for Tasmania, standing as an independent in the seat of Bass on the northeast coastal region of Tasmania. Mark Brown, thank you so much for your insights today on 2020. Thanks, Neil. It's been great to be with you. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.